All right, it is time to expand the greatest hockey league in the entire world, the PHL, the Pasta Hockey League. It will be expanding from 10 teams to 17 teams, and we are gonna simulate and see who will dominate the next five years in the PHL. So starting off with the Nebraska Wieners, we have Connor McDavid at a 99 overall, along with Mark Stone at a 90. John Tavares, who was an 88, is also there. With Ryan O'Reilly, Jarrett McCann, Casey Middlestat. On defense, they have Miro Heiskanen and Drew Doughty as their top pair. They also have Thomas Shabbat at an 89, and they have Ilya Sorokin in the net at a 92. The Ajax Iceman are going to have Sidney Crosby at a 93, Kucherov 94, and Kevin Fiala on that first line. They also have Claude Giroux and Rope Hints. Defensively, they have Rome Roman Yossi and John Carlson as their first line pair. And they have Freddie Anderson in the net. The Alabama Burger Boys are going to have Brad Marchand at a 92. Patrice Bergeron at a 92. And Jake Gensel at a 90. They also have Sebastian Ajo at a 91. And Evgeny Malkin on that third line. Defensively, they have Darnell Nurse at an 86. And Kale McCarr a 96. And they have Sergei Bobrovsky in the net. The Alberta Moose are going to have Miko Rantanen at a 93 overall. Vinny Trocek an 87. Josh Norris 87. Their forward course not the greatest. Defensively, they have Petra Angelo and Aaron Ekblad both at an 89 overall. And they have Andre Vasilevsky at a 94 overall. An absolute stud. And Darcy Kemper as their backup, so that is not bad either. Now, one of the newer teams in the PHL is the California Stoners. They are going to have Leon Dreisettle at a 96, Dylan Larkin 91, and Alex Ovechkin 92. Defensively, they're going to have Rasmus Dahlin as their number one D-man at a 91. And they have Tristan Jari in the net at an 86 overall. Overall. The Edmonton Steamers are going to have Kirill Kaprizov at a 91, Jack Hughes a 90, and Drake Batherson an 86. That is one hell of a first line, man. And they're all young too, 24, 21, and 25. So they are definitely going to be good for years to come. They also have Trevor Zegras on the second line at an 85. On D, they have Charlie McAvoy at a 94, and Stuart Skinner is their starting goalie at an 85 overall. They also have Uka Pekalukkanen at an 80. The El Paso cover athletes have Panarin, Duchesne, and Timo Meyer on their first line. Defensively, they have Quinn Hughes at a 91 and Jamie Drysdale an 83. And they have Linus Allmark in the net at a 92 overall. The Fort Wayne Gremlins are going to have Brady Kachuk at an 89, Mika Zabinajet and Steven Stamkos as their first line. They also have Dubois and Dylan Cousins on their second line. Defensively, they're going to have Mo Sider at an 87 and not much else. And they have Jeremy Swayman as their starting goalie as an 85 overall. The Loveland All-Stars are going to have Kyle Connor 92, Elias Pettersson 90, and Jordan Cairo 89 as their first line. They also have Marty Natchez, Thomas Hurdle, and Joe Pavelski on that second line. Defensively, they're going to have Mikhail Sergachev at an 87, Morgan Riley 84, and they have Alexander Georgiev in the net as their starting goalie at an 86. Another new team, the Nova Scotia Scavengers, are going to have Carter Verhage an 86, Austin Matthews a 94, and Patrick Line an 87 on that first line. They also have Timmy Stu at an 86, Valerie Nachushkin. Hopefully, there's no hookers going to his room. Room. On defense, they have Hampus Lindholm at a 90 overall and not much else if I'm being honest. Their starting goalie is Spencer Knight at an 85 overall, Matthew Kachuk at a 94, Mark Scheifele 87, and William Nylander 90. This is one of the newer teams in the PHL, the Nunavut Polar Bears. It is going to be cold as balls in this arena. Defensively, they have Shea Theodore at an 88 overall, and they have Connor Hellebuck as their starting goalie, a 93 overall. The Delta Black Raw are going to have Johnny Goodrow, Bo Horvat, and Svechnikov on that first line, and 89, 92, and 80. 89. Not bad at all. Jamie Benn is also going to be on the team. Hopefully he's not going to be cross-checking anybody's next. Defensively, they're going to have Victor Hedman as their number one D-man at a 95. And they have UC Saros as their starting goalie, a 91 overall. They also have Francois as their backup, an 84. The Waterloo Rays are going to have Zach Hyman, 88. Nathan McKinnon, the GOAT, 96. And Alex Debrinkit at a 90. Adrian Kempe is also going to be there. Cole Perfetti, he's going to grow for sure. Defensively, they have Jacob Slavin at a 91 overall. Overall, wait a minute. There's two C's in Jacob for Jacob Slavin. I have never noticed that before ever. And they have Jake Ottinger in the net at a 92 overall. Now, this is one of the newer teams in the PHL, the Toronto Losers, mainly because they haven't won a Stanley Cup in over 50 years. But anyways, they will have Philip Forsberg at a 91 overall, Alexander Barkov, 92, Robert Thomas, 88. They also have Tage Thompson, who is a 92, and Gabriel Landeskog. Defensively, they don't have much other than Eric Carlson at a 90 overall. And in goal, 
they're going to have Phoenix Copley at an 85 overall, so they're definitely hurting for goaltenders. The Regina Swamp Rabbits are going to have Jason Robertson, 93, Matthew Barzell, 88, and Mitch Marner, 92. The rest of their forward core is not the greatest. Defensively, they don't have much other than Owen Power and Dougie Hamilton, and they have Logan Thompson as their starting goalie at an 87 overall. The Yukon Bears have Patrick Kane at an 89 overall, Anze Kopitar, 88, and David Pasternak, 93. Defensively, they have Adam Fox at a 92 and Adam Pellick 88. And Vanacek is their starting goalie at an 88 overall. They have Matt Murray at an 83 as their backup. And Sebastian Ajo would take home the Selkie. BBC Wolfpack are going to have Nikolai Ehlers at an 88, Braden Point at a 90, and Capo Caco at a 91. They will also have Quinton Byfield, who is a 90, Jack Eichel, who is a 91, Dawson Mercer at an 88, Yanni Gord an 85. Defensively, they have Devon Taves at an 89, and Brendan Montour at an 87. And in the net, they have Igor Shosturkin at a 95, probably the best goalie in the league at this point. Also, yes, I'm three years in while I'm showing this. That's why Capo Caco is a 91, and Quinton Byfield is a 90, and he's 23 years old. I forgot to show the BBC Wolfpack when I was introducing all the team's rosters so here they are the bbc beautiful british columbia wolf pack and now that we know all the teams in the phl let's simulate and see who's going to go on to win the stanley cup year after year if you enjoy videos like this make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel we are on our way to 10,000 subscribers why not help us get there at the end of year number one the loveland all-stars are going to finish first in the entire phl going 47 25 and 10 followed by the alabama burger boys the yukon bears and the waterloo riz the fort wayne Gremlins, the Nova Scotia Scavengers, and the Edmonton Steamers were the three worst teams in all of hockey. But unfortunately for Edmonton, they are in a division with more teams than any other division, so they are the only team that will not be making the playoffs. Austin Matthews would lead the entire PHL in points with 100, followed by the GOAT, Nathan McKinnon, Alexander Barkov, Connor McDavid had 93, William Nylander 93. For goals, Pasta would have the most at 51, followed by Matthews 48, Kucherov 47, Nathan McKinnon had 46, Kyle Connor 40. For D-Man, Shea Theodore would have the most at 78, followed by Eric Carlson, 77, Adam Fox, 77, and Miro Heiskanen, 75. Kale McCarr would only have 68 points and 11 goals. That is tough. For goalies, Vanacek had the most wins with 38, followed by Bobrovsky, 34, Georgiev, 33. For shutout, Stuart Skinner would have the most at 7, followed by Vanacek's 5. Freddie Anderson had 4, Vassy had 4. And here are our year 1 playoff matchups. 16 teams make the playoffs, one team does not, and that one team was the the Edmonton Steamers, but now we have a true playoff format that will determine the best team in the PHL for that season. Four rounds, seven games apiece. Who's going to take home the Pasta Cup, baby? And in the Stanley Cup final, we have the Nebraska Wieners versus the Nunavut Polar Bears. Who is going to take home the Stanley Cup? And Nebraska is going to go on to win the Stanley Cup as they beat Nunavut in seven games in the Stanley Cup final. We would pull out a game seven victory, and Nebraska Wieners are your Stanley Cup champions or the Past the Cup champions, either or. And your Conn Smythe winner is Connor McDavid. And here comes the captain of Nebraska, Connor McDavid, coming to lift the Stanley Cup for the first time in his career. And the first time for the Nebraska Wieners. They are finally Stanley Cup champions, their first season in the PHL, and they are already champions. They are the PHL version of the Golden Knights. No surprise here as McDavid leads the entire PHL in the playoffs for scoring with 35 points in 25 games. Followed by Mark Stone's 32, Kachuk had 29, Nylander 27, Matthews to take home the Ted Lynn. The Art Ross and the Hart Trophy, while Pasta would take home the Maurice Richard. Kale McCarr would somehow take home the Norris. I have no idea how he was not even that good, to be honest. Maddie Beneers would take home the Calder. McDavid obviously took home the Conn Smythe. Pabrovsky would take home the Vesna. And Bergeron would take home the Selkie. At the end of year number two, the Alabama Burger Boys are going to finish first in the PHL with a 52, 22, and 8 record, followed by the Delta Black Draw, the Waterloo Riz, and the Yukon Bears. Let's see which team missed the playoffs this season. And Nebraska is going to end up missing the playoffs with a 33-40-9 and record. Even though they were better than the Scavengers and the Gremlins, Connor McDavid would have the most points in the PHL with 100, followed by Nathan McKinnon's 99, Matthews had 99, Dabrinkit had 97, Marshawn 92, Bo Horvat had 90, Svechnikov 89, Kachuk 88, Larkin 88. For goals, Kyle Connor would have the most with 54, followed by Pasta at 49, McKinnon 49, McDavid 
at 48, Matthews 45, Robertson 45. For defensemen, Adam Fox had the most at 86. He only had nine goals, but 77 assists. Kale McCarr had 81, Carlson 78, Slavin 70. Stuart Skinner would have the most wins by any goalie with 39, followed by UC Saros and Bobrovsky. Skinner would also have the most shutouts with six. Actually, he was tied with Linus Allmark at six. UC Saros had five, Swayman four, Vanacek four. And here are our year two playoff matchups. And the Fort Wayne Gremlins are going to go on to win the Stanley Cup as they beat the Loveland All-Stars in the Stanley Cup final in seven games. For the playoffs, Elias Pettersson had the most points with 31, followed by Zabinijad's 29, Matthew Kachuk 25, Steven Stamkos 25, and Kyle Connor 24. Bo Horvat would take home the Ted Lindsay and the Hart Trophy, while Kyle Connor would take home the Maurice Richard and Connor McDavid would take home the Art Ross. Kale McCarr with another Norris Trophy. Connor Bedard would take home the Calder for the Edmonton Steamers. Mika Zabinijad is your Conn Smythe winner. Stuart Skinner would take home the Vesna, And Austin Matthews would actually take home the Selkie. At the end of year number three, the Edmonton Steamers are going to finish first in the PHL with a 53-23-6 record, followed by the Delta Black Draw, the Yukon Bears, the Toronto Losers, and the El Paso Cover Athletes. Unfortunately, the Loveland All-Stars are the only team missing the playoffs this season. They would finish with a 30-41-11 record. Connor McDavid would have the most points in the PHL with 104, followed by Leon Dreisaitl's 99, Alex Ovechkin 97, Debrinkit 96, past the 96, Jesper Bratt had 90, Crosby had 89, McDavid had the most goals at 53, followed by passes 51, Sergei Kuznetsov had 50, he's 18 years old. In his first season in the PHL, he has 50 goals and 73 points. The 50 goals, that is a PHL record for your first season. Adam Fox had the most points by a defenseman yet again with 89, followed by Eric Carlson's 82, Kale McCarr 82, Rasmus Dahlin had 80. For goalies, Ilya Sorokin had the most wins at 38, followed by Linus Allmark's 37, Vanacek 35, UC Saros 35. For shutouts, Stuart Skinner had the most at 4, followed by Arthur Smith had 3, even though he was 7, 13, and 2. He had 3 shutouts somehow. And this is our year 3 playoff matchups. And the Fort Wayne Gremlins are going to go on to win the Stanley Cup yet again as they beat the El Paso cover athletes in 7 games in the Stanley Cup final. For the playoffs, Abinajad would actually be tied with Dylan Gunther for the most points at 38, followed by Brady Kachuk's 32, Sam Reinhart 30, Stammer 28. The Fort Wayne Gremlins go back to back as Stanley Cup champions. Leon Dreisaitl would take home the Ted Lindsay and the Hart Trophy, while McDavid would take home the Maurice Richard and the Art Ross. Adam Fox would take home the Norris. Kuznetsov would take home the Calder. Dylan Gunther would take home the Conn Smythe. Igor would take home the Vesna. At the end of year number four, the Toronto Losers actually finished first in the PHL going 51, 26, and 5. Followed by the BBC Wolfpack, the Waterloo Riz, the Nebraska Wieners, and the Fort Wayne Gremlins. Unfortunately, the Loveland All-Stars are going to miss the playoffs as they finish dead last in the PHL going 31, 46, and 5. Dylan Larkin would actually have the most points by any player with 113, followed by Leon Dreisaitl's 112, Connor McDavid's 111, Jason Robertson 105, the GOAT Nathan McKinnon had 100, Tage Thompson 99, Barkov had 97. For goals, Jason Robertson had 62 goals leading the entire PHL. That was almost 10 more than Leon Dreisaitl who came in second with 53, Pasta had 51, Kucherov 50, Kyle Connor 50, and Nathan McKinnon 50. For defenseman, Eric Carlson had the most points at 86, followed by Adam Fox, Hampus Lindholm, and Kale McCarr. Jake Ottinger would have the most wins by any goalie with 35, followed by Jeremy Swayman, 34, Igor Shosturkin, 33, and here is our year four playoff matchups. And the Regina Swamp Rabbits would go on to win the Stanley Cup as they beat the BBC Wolfpack in the Stanley Cup final. Jason Robertson would have the most points for the playoffs with 26. He also had 16 goals, followed by Jack Eichel's 25, Capo Caco had 23, Nikolai Ehlers, 22, Leon Dreisaitl. Dylan Larkin would take home the Ted Lindsay, the Art Ross, and the Hart Trophy, while Jason Robertson would take home the Maurice Richard. Eric Carlson would take home the Norris. Benson would take home the Calder. Jason Robertson would take home the Conn Smythe. Igor would take home the Vesna, back-to-back Vesnas. And Austin Matthews with another Selkie Trophy. At the end of year number five, the Edmonton Steamers are going to finish first in the PHL, going 49, 26, and 7. Followed by the Ajax Iceman, the BBC Wolfpack, the Waterloo Riz, and the California Stoners. 
Unfortunately for the Yukon Bears, they will miss the playoffs as they go 35, 42, and 5. Even though the Alberta Moose and the Nunavut Polar Bears have worse records, they are going to somehow make the playoffs. Connor McDavid would yet again lead the PHL in points with 116, followed by passes 104, Leon Dreisaitl 101, Dylan Larkin 100, Nikita Kucherov, Bo Horvat had 99, Matthew Barzell had 98. For goals, Pasta had the most at 55, followed by Nikita Kucherov's 52, Leon Dreisaitl, Jason Robertson had 51, Kuznetsov, Sergei Kuznetsov had 49. So he dropped off in his sophomore season, only having 38 goals, but he rebounded very well this season with 49. Adam Fox had the most points by a defenseman with 92, followed by Mo Sider, 70. Rasmus Dahlin had 67, Dougie Hamilton, 64. Yeah, it was not even close. Adam Fox was by far away the best defenseman in the PHL this season. For goalies, Tristan Jari actually had the most wins by any goaltender with 36, followed by Stuart Skinner's 35, Igor had 33, Jay Gottinger had 33. For shutouts, Connor Hellebuck had the most at 5, then Tristan Jari and Sorokin were tied at 4 apiece. And finally, this is our Year 5 playoff matchups. And in the Stanley Cup Final, we have the Delta Black Raw versus the Nebraska Wieners. Who is going to take home the Stanley Cup? And Nebraska is going to go on to win the Stanley Cup as they beat the Delta Black Raw in 6 games in the Stanley Cup Final. And yet again, the Nebraska Wieners are Stanley Cup champions. What a hard-fought Stanley Cup Final over the Delta Black Raw. Connor McDavid is yet again your Conn Smythe winner. It says he had four goals and seven assists in the playoffs, but that is probably not true. And here he comes again, Connor McDavid coming to lift the Stanley Cup for the second time in his career and second time in franchise history that the Nebraska Wieners are Stanley Cup champions in the greatest league in the world, the PHL, the Pasta Hockey League, baby. McDavid would have the most points in the playoffs in 26 games. He had 18 goals, 18 assists for 36 points, followed by Mark Shifley's 23, Mark Stone had 22, Svechnikov at 21, Marshawn 20, Connor McDavid would take home the Ted Lindsay, the Art Ross, and the Hart Trophy, while Pasternak would take home the Maurice Richard, Adam Fox would obviously take home the Norris, the Conn Smythe obviously to Connor McDavid, and Bo Horvat would take home the Selkie. And that is going to do it for this video. We have crowned 10 Stanley Cup winners in the PHL, starting off with the Alberta Moose, the Yukon Bears, the Regina Swamp Rabbits, the El Paso Cover Athletes, the Yukon Bears, again then the nebraska wieners the fort wayne gremlins the fort wayne gremlins again the first team to go back to back the regina swamp rabbits and finally the nebraska wieners those are the first 10 stanley cup winners in phl history let me know in the comments below if you want to see me go 10 more years or even go like 25 years in the phl anyways if you enjoyed the video leave a like and subscribe to the channel and remember don't be silly wrap your willy